good morning. I want to welcome you this morning to our uh, Mountain Movers prayer call. We are now in a new month. This is the month of March. And so this month, our focus is going to be on the preparation for the intercessor. And today's um, call, we're going to talk a little bit about a clean heart. So I just want to welcome you. I'm Pastor Jewel Williams, one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Church of God. And so we just are so grateful for um, this opportunity. Again, I, before I go into today's uh, prayer focus, I want to again just say thank you to those that have so generously been um, planting a seed as we are in the preparation of um, opening and launching our church, Abundant Life Church of God here in uh, Chicago on the uh, southeast side. And Many of you have just so generously been giving, and it's just been a blessing to see. Um, if others of you would love to give or would like to give, you can um, go to our website, AbundantLifeCOG.net, and on our page, you'll see 2016 launch, and the information is there. So again, thank you. So let's just jump right into what we're talking about today. And today, I want to ask you a question. What is an intercessor? When you look at the Bible and understand, uh, to get an understanding of what it means to intercede or to or intercession, it means to intervene on behalf of someone. So when we apply that to prayer, that means you become an arbitrator or a go-between. And so Jesus was uh, the one making intercession for us with the Father. And as the people of God, we must make intercess, intercession or a be a go-between for others. So we do that by bringing them to God in prayer. And, and, and I want to use that scripture, Romans 8 and 34 says, Who is he that co um, condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercessions for us. So Christ intercedes for us. And, you know, it. we've often heard it, you know, you've probably heard preach it, you know, people preach it, what? That we should be like Christ. And so in this instant, Christ made intercessions for us to the Father. So you and I need to make intercessions to the Father for others. Those that are not able, those that are not capable, those that may not even realize they need it, but yet we go and we intercede. So to me, that lets us know that our prayer life shouldn't only be about me, myself, and I. It shouldn't only be about what I need. It shouldn't only be about what's going to work best for me, but it opens the heart of those that pray to see what God wants for others. And so my question then to that is, well, what is an intercessor? We see that's the person that's a goal between, but what is standing in the, in the way of us interceding? And there are many reasons why we don't pray or why we don't intercede. And, and I read a book that was talking about the hindrances to deliverance, but in that there were many things that really also become a hindrance to a prayer life. So one of the things that hinder us is a lack of faith. When we're not trusting really that what we're asking for, we're going to receive it, then we really are praying amiss. We're not really praying in the confidence and the and the assurance that God has told us in his word that he will do. We seek him, we'll find him, we ask, it'll be given. If we're not confident in, in, and have faith in that, we don't really pray the way we ought to. And we don't necessarily pray um, what I call those bold and um, just sometimes may seem really crazy kind of, you know, crazy faith types of, of dreams, of prayers rather. And we don't pray those because we have a lack of faith or belief that God is really going to answer them. So we go more in prayer like we're begging, you know, Lord, if it's your will, would you do this? Well, it's already God's will. It's God's will to heal. It's God's will to um, save. Now, you know, how he's going to do that, I, you and I may not have the answer to that, but we can still go boldly and know that these things are his will and we can pray and trust in his timing and his, the way that he's going to answer. Another thing that happens is we have a lack of spiritual discipline. Um, you can't expect answers to prayers that you're not praying. Uh, you know, it's not about I'm wishing for something. It is actually taking that time and going before the Lord and praying. And if we don't have a lack of dis, if we have a lack of discipline, we're not praying as we ought to. We're not reading our word. We're not doing the things that we need to do so that we can ensure that 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 will also help build our faith life. That will build our trust. See, if you get in a word and really begin to soak it up and eat it and understand it, then even when you go to prayer, pray. 
excuse me, your prayers will shift because they won't be just prayers amiss, but you begin to even pray the word. You begin to pray what God has already established and what he's already said he is doing. Amen. And then another thing that stands in the way is just sin, you know, lack of repentance, wrong relationship with God, um, unforgiveness, you know, anger, these things stand in a way, because what does God say about if you won't forgive someone else what they've done to you, then we can't receive it from him. And that instantly is a hindrance to our prayer life. So we have to check our what's in our heart so that we will know if there's something standing in the way of what's going on or what's um, keeping our prayer life from being what God really wants it to be. And so we just want to focus on that part right there. What's what's in our hearts that need to that God needs to work on so that our prayer lives can go to that next level in the Lord. And so I'm going to give you a couple of verses of scripture and then we'll pray after that. So Psalms 51 verses 1 through 4, it's a very familiar scripture. It says, "Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions." Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before you. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. So, you know, there's some key steps in here that we need to look at in terms of uh, our, our, our life before the Lord and so that our prayer life is not hindered. So the first thing is we have to be willing to confess our sins. And, and, and of course, that means we need God to expose what's in our heart, but we have to confess our sin. Too many times if we're walking around with things, unforgiveness in our heart, we're walking around with, um, you know, just our wrong motives. If we're walk, walking around with things in our heart, we can't expect then for the Lord to really answer the prayers that we're praying. They're, they're hindered. So we need to kept, confess our sins. And then we have to seek, you know, God's forgiveness for our sins. So it's one thing to confess it. But when I say seek the forgiveness, sometimes let's say you, you acknowledge that there's been sin in your life. But sometimes there's this problem where now we allow the enemy to get in those places and we stay hindered because we 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 um we feel like we've done too much we've done too much wrong and god can't forgive us and so we walk around hindered now not because of the sin but because of the guilt of the sin so when we ask seek god's forgiveness then when we receive his forgiveness we're able to function and to do the things that he's called us to do um and again you know it's that uh, that we've acknowledged those sins are against God. And really, when we have a mindset that I don't think, you know, in this this verse that it was saying that the sin and I did didn't include the people that that were affected. But the acknowledgement is, Lord, if I acknowledge when I sin, it's not, you know, my brother or sister, because see, we just think I did something to a person. That's one thing. But if we make that take that to the next level and acknowledge that the sin is against God, it helps us to understand the the severity of what it is we've done or the severity of the things going on. And so we want to always remember, whatever I do, God, it's against you. And I believe that even helps us when we go back to talking about that spiritual discipline, that helps us to realize how important it is for us to walk in righteousness. So what does God require for us? Um, Psalms 51 and 6 says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So, you know, there's this transparency that you and I must have in our life if we really want to make sure that our prayer life is one that's effective. Uh, we we need a transparency before God, even though nothing is hidden from him. But the transparency comes with us acknowledging our need, us acknowledging our shortcoming, us acknowledging just some places where um maybe we still need some work on and that calls for honesty sometimes the hardest thing for us to do is acknowledge that we have some shortcomings it's it's hard to acknowledge you know i have fear or it's a, it's 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 hard to acknowledge that you know i'm still dealing with some residue of emotions from one thing or another so we have to really be honest with ourselves um, and then we seek wisdom when we seek wisdom from God, he already said if we lack it, lack understanding, he would give it to us. If we lack wisdom, he would give it to us. And so part of that transparency helps us to, one, see where we you know, need some wisdom, and then God's going to give it to us. And that wisdom also helps us because then it teaches us even how we ought to pray, one, for ourselves, and then also how to pray for others. 
Um, another scripture I want to give you is Matthew 23, verses 25 and 26. It says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within there are full of extortion and excess. Thou, though thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. You know, one thing I love about scripture is Jesus is always just really very blunt and um, you know, he just really tells it like it is and um, and it's not hidden. And so it's real clear what he's saying um, to those that were religious. He's telling them your inner focus your, has to has to happen before an outward focus can can take place. And so that's sometimes one of the areas where we fall down. We want to clean up what what we look like on the outside. We we want to make sure we're saying the right words, the right speech. You know, we we want the prayers that flowery. But if our hearts are not right, if there's sin hidden there, if there's if there's weaknesses and brokenness and bondages in our lives, that is really what hinders us. So it doesn't matter how um, flowery our words are, how eloquent we speak, that on the outside doesn't matter if the inside is broken and damaged and not what God wants us to be, which then hinders our prayer lives in several ways. It hinders because of the sin and sometimes the brokenness just hinders because then we have lack of power because we've not been healed in some places. And so we don't want to we don't want to focus to start outward. We want to really look inward and say, Lord, cleanse me from the inside out so that I can be the person you've called me to be. And that's the second point I want to make with the scriptures. He wants us to be clean vessels, clean vessels to carry hit, carry the prayers to him so that we can intercede. See, that's why Jesus was the best intercessor. Why? Because he was clean. He was queen clean before the Lord. He was chosen of the Lord to intercede. God listens to him and hears him on our behalf. And we want God to hear us and listen on the behalf of others and for the conditions in our world and our leaders and however it is that we're playing. And and then we want to have clear vision because if our focus is off, see their focus was off. They were just looking at the outside and not looking at the inside. We want our, to have clear vision because when we have clear vision, then when we go to pray, we hear better what God is telling us. We hear how we ought to pray. The Holy Spirit directs us. But if we have too much junk and stuff in the way, we're not able to hear the way that we need to hear. So um, today as we as I get ready to go and pray, I just want us to remember that, you know, we're talking about being an intercessor. We're talking about having our, taking our prayer life to the next level. Um, there's a book called Militant Prayer Warrior. If you haven't read that book, that's an excellent book to read. I think it's Cindy Jacobs is the name of the author. And I would recommend anyone getting that. But we're in a season and a time where we really need to pray um, earnestly before the Lord. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the year, I started talking about um, that the Lord said this is a year of exposure. And all you have to do is listen. There's so many things coming out. There's so so many um, things that are being exposed. But we need to be a people that pray so that one, we're praying for one another, for our strength. Um, and then two, we're praying that God's will is done in not only our lives, but in the lives of others. So let us go to pray. Um, right now. Lord, we thank you right now this morning. God, we are grateful that we have this opportunity to come to you in prayer. We thankful, Lord, that you told us and you've given us the open invitation to seek you. And Lord, we come and seek you early. And Father, we thank you now that you are the one that reveals secrets. Lord, you reveal your secrets to your people and to your intercessors. And so, Lord, we want to be in that place where we hear from you, where we know how to pray. We know what's on your heart. And so, God, we're asking that you would just bring us to that place where we have ears to hear what the spirit is speaking and so first lord we we ask you to real reveal the things that are in our hearts help us to come to you so that you can expose to us the truth of our hearts and so we ask you to create a right spirit within us help us to understand the truth about ourselves so that we would have nothing hindering us and who you have called us to be Lord, we pray for those things that, that may hinder our prayer life. If, if there's lack of faith, Lord, we ask you to help us to believe in your word and your promises so that we can come with assurance when we ask you or seek you in prayer. Lord, we ask, and that we, we ask you to forgive us for our lack of faith and help us to be able to 
um, come to you so that you would help us to see what is hindering us in those areas. Lord, we also pray that you help us so that we will not have a lack of spiritual discipline. Help us to train ourselves to seek you daily in our time of reading your word, in our time of prayer, and in our pursuit to live a holy life. So we ask you to help us to discipline ourselves to come to a place where we pray and it's not a uh, a struggle for us to pray. Bring us to that place where we pray and 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 even if it starts where we only can pray two or three minutes, then Lord, we thank you for the two or three minutes, but grow us up in our prayer lives. Help us to continue to pray and to talk to you and seek you and let it become fluent, us become fluent in our prayer and in our language with you. Help us to come fluent in how we seek you and what we seek you for and that it's not a matter of us struggling to come up with the words that we need to be able to talk to you and pray and to seek your face. So Lord, we also ask you to reveal those hidden things in our heart. If there's any sin in there, we ask you first to for, for forgiveness. And then we ask you to, to just expose those things to us. If there's unforgiveness, then Lord, show us so that we can ask, uh, seek forgiveness. If there's a lack of repentance on our part, Lord, then we ask you to help us to break down that stony heart and those things that are standing in the way. If, there's, if we have a wrong relationship with you. We ask you to help us so that we can stand in a place where we have a right relationship with you. We repent, Lord, of anything that has stood in the way. Lord, if things that we have trusted over you, we, we uh, repent of doubt. We repent, Lord God, and ask you to heal us from those things. If there's hurt or bitterness or anger or frustration, Lord God, we ask you to heal us of those things. Set us free so that we can pray as you desire us to pray. So, Lord, we confess our sins and anything that hinders that prayer life so that we can be your chosen vessel because it is our desire lord that we move as you say move we pray as you say pray and so lord even in this this time of prayer we're seeking first that you cleanse us up that you change us that you uh help us so that we can be who you've called us to be help us lord so we can daily to seek you and that we, as we seek you, Lord God, if there's things that we need to repent of, we ask you to help us. If there's things that we need you to change in us, we ask you to change. If there's things that we need you to restore, we ask you to restore, build, help, Lord God, because we need you. If you do not help us, Father, we have no place to go. And so we acknowledge before you, God, that we have a need for you. We acknowledge that we're not able to do this in our own power and in our own understanding. We acknowledge that we have a need for you. We acknowledge, Lord, today that without you, we have no way to do anything. And so we acknowledge it. Some may come and say, oh, you need God as a crutch. God, you're not a crutch. You are our God, our Savior, and you are our helper and our ever-present help. And we thank you for that, Lord. We ask you to help us to have an inner focus so that you can do the internal work within us, which will help to express itself outwardly to you and to others. So Father, do the work in us, Lord. Help us, Father, to love more, because if we have a greater love for you and for your people, Lord God, then there we will begin to have a burden to pray. We will begin, Lord, I ask you right now to give some people some burdens to pray. Give some people some burdens to, to seek you, Lord, burden to want to come and, and request from you the needs of people. Lord, we hear so many things going on in our world, but Father, I often see your people, they get so into and they get so drawn into the back and forth about who is this and who is that. But I often ask who's praying, who's seeking you, who's coming and asking you for clarity and wisdom. So, Lord, give your people a burden so that we would pray. Make us clean vessels, Lord. Help us to have a, um, a pure heart. Give us clear vision today, Lord, because if we don't we don't see clearly if we have spiritual cataracts on our eyes. We're not seeing what you want us to see. Our vision is blurry. So, Father, we ask you to give us clear vision today so we're able to see the things that you want us to see. We're able to come to you and pray for the things that you want us to pray because lord we can look in our earth and we can see if we see a brother or sister that's fallen instead of us being the first one to pass the information on facebook about see who's who's fallen help us to be the first one to hit our our knees and go mm, into a place of prayer where we're praying for those that have been 
uh, have been broken, those that have stepped out of your will. Lord, so help us to pray, Lord. Give us that burden for prayer. I just keep saying that, Lord. Give us the burden to pray. Help us to shut our mouths, to stop talking about stuff to one another and to begin to talk to you about the things that we see. And so, Lord, when you have exposed us to your cleansing power, then restore us to a right spirit and change our stony hearts that, that we ask you to help us to, and so that we can be good stewards to the truth that you have revealed to us. Help us to see what things we should pray for, Lord. Help us to understand your plan in this world so that we can align our prayers to that which you want us to do. Help us to pray for more than our own personal needs. Lord, help us not to be selfish prayers. An intercessor isn't selfish. An intercessor is one that goes before and sacrifices their time, their energy on behalf of others. Christ, you gave us the greatest example. You interceded for us, not because we were good, not because we deserved it, not because we were worthy. We were worthless, but you didn't consider us worth it. You considered us worth it because you died on the cross for us and you interceded when we couldn't intercede for ourselves. So Father, help us to not just be selfish and only praying for what I want and what will make me feel good, but help us to pray for those that we hear are struggling those that are dealing with the death of loved ones and our burden. Lord, we ask you to help us to pray for those that even, even now have to go and bury loved ones. Give them strength today, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that you would comfort them in this time when things just really don't make sense to them, but help them to know you paid the price for it all. And that even in the midst of their difficulty, you are still there. You are still able to hold them up and to help them through this time. You now have become their strength in their time of weakness. Lord, there's somebody that's sick and they're just, they're, they're sick and tired of being sick. They are ready to give up. But father, we ask that you would touch and that you would heal, that you would restore their body to good health and and Lord, there's some that even when we pray, we don't understand. They don't get healed and we don't understand it. But Father, even if they don't find their healing here on earth, we pray that they have a relationship with you such so that when they come with you, they'll be changed. And that that sickness that maybe they felt here on earth, God, they won't, there no longer will be any sickness. There will no longer be any pain. And give us an opportunity to understand your sovereignty, God. Mm. You are a sovereign God, and we don't always understand the way things work out. But what we do know is that you do, in the end, work out all things for our good. So we thank you today, Lord God, that as you change us, as you shift us, that you give us a clear heart, a clear vision, and a passion. I pray right now, Lord, that you ignite passion in your people for prayer. Ignite it, Lord God. Let it be like breath that if they don't pray and we don't pray, Father, it'll be almost like we're drowned and almost like we've lost our breath. Lord, let us have a passion for prayer. Father, and I thank you today that you've shifted in somebody right now. I just believe that in the name of Jesus, that you're taking somebody to that place where you will make them a militant prayer warrior, a militant intercessor, where they see it and they understand. And Lord, we will we ask you to even change our language in prayer so that we pray the way that you want us to. So now, Father, we make this declaration before you. There is no weapon that the enemy brings against us that will prosper. And every tongue that, that rises against us is defeated. So, Lord, we come with that boldness and that assurance that when we pray and when we do what you called us to do, no matter what attack the enemy may bring, that we are conquerors. We are more than victorious. And we are established in righteousness and oppression is far from us today. And, Lord, we, we the weapons that we fight with are not going to be carnal, but they're going to be mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. So Father, you're going to give us the language and prayer that becomes the weapon that we use because it's not carnal. Lord, that's why we ask you to cleanse us so that we can come before you with holy lips and we can speak before you righteously. So Lord God, we thank you for the weapons that you're giving us, even in our prayer lives. And so we take up the shield of faith. 
and we quench every fiery dart that comes against us from our enemy. We take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and use it against the enemy. So, Father, even in our time of prayer, Lord, we're going to learn how to use your word even more in our time of prayer. We're going to begin to pray the scriptures with more uh, clarity, with more assurance. And so we thank you right now, Lord, for what you're doing. We are redeemed from the curse of the law, and we are released from sickness and from all spiritual death. So I thank you, Lord God, for your intercessors today. I pray, Lord, for them to be released from sickness and all spiritual death and every attack that the enemy may bring against them. We thank you today that we stand victorious. We are overcomers and we are all we're all overcoming because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So, Father, we stand knowing that we have been girded up with your power and your anointing and your authority, that it is that place that we come in prayer. And we stand in this evil day, having our loins girded up with the truth, and we have on the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. We take the shield of faith. We are covered with the helmet of salvation. We use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so, Lord God, we come fully armored up right now in the name of Jesus. I speak that every intercessor is armored up, Lord God, that we don't come without our armor on and that we are able to stand against all of the things that the enemy may try to bring in this day and in this time. And we are blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And today we no longer carry the spirit of fear because we have power, we have love, and we have a sound mind. Lord God, you love us. And because of that, Father, we can walk in that assurance. We have been forgiven from all our sins that have kept us from walking as, as intercessors. And we have been empowered to pray and we will pray with an expectation of asking and receiving from you guys. So today we have been empowered for the work and we will walk fully in it. This is our prayer. We declare this this day in Jesus name. We pray. Amen and amen. Lord, I just thank you today. I, I just thank you today. I thank you for who you are and for what you're doing in us. And so I just declare for those that are either on the line or will listen to this later, that God puts a new burden in your life. I pray for the impartation of the intercessor in you. I pray that God would rise up in you a new desire to be part of the militant intercessors that he's created in this time because we are in a time where we need it. We need people. God needs people that are going to pray. They're going to intercede. They're going to call out to him, going to seek his face and are willing to do what he's called them to do. And they're going to fight those wars willingly on their knees. So we thank the Lord for that today. So we want you to join us next Thursday, which is March the 10th. Um, and our call focus will be the language of the intercessor. And, you know, I talked a little bit about it today, but we're going to go more into what is the language of the intercessor. And our call again is at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. For those that may be listening to this via um, YouTube, if you want to call in at the time of the call, that number 712-832-8330. And that access code is 489-5856. So until next time, um, we thank you and ask you to allow the Lord to use you today and use this prayer to just continue to you just keep praying and then you ask the Lord to show you where where do he want to make some changes in your life as the intercessor. And as we say goodbye for those that will be listening to this via. Unselfishly died on Calvary. Oh, how you gave your life for me. Bruised, scorned, crowned your head with thorns. No greater love performed for me. Nails in your hands, nails in your feet, piercing your side. Could barely breathe, could have gained down, yet you remain standing in awe of the price you pay. I never knew. Of a love so true, you gave your life, and still I heard you lost so many times to fly you again. But I repent, forgive me for my sin. You paid it all.
Hey.